This is the Red Beard Podcast. Hold on to your butt. Do we really suck? Or is this guy really that good? I have one speed, I have one gear. Go! Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tony from the Red Beard Podcast, and I am hanging out, as always, with you guys know who. Yeah, that's right. You know who I am. I don't need to say my name, do I? Yeah, I don't say it. Fuck it. Who cares? Not going to say shit. Good. So it doesn't even matter. So Guess who the fuck it is? It doesn't matter, dude. We already established that. So <laughs> you're hanging with them every Friday. Figure it out. So anyway, guys, welcome to the Red Beard Podcast. Star Wars. Star Wars is happening. Uh, whether we want it to or not, I and mean, everybody wants it to happen, uh, it is coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow, dude. You're yeah. going to see it at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. It's crazy. Yep. It's crazy that you're seeing it at 8 o'clock. Are you excited about it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings me to my next point. I feel point. like Steve Carell in the 40-year-old virgin right now. It's like... <laughs> well, I don't know. He was more scared. Oh, true. <laughs> so anyway. I'm kind of scared. I'll be honest with you. It's like, it's a scary time to go and see Star Wars after 32 years. Yeah. Right? Because I don't count any of the shit that came with the prequels i'd be scared if the lightsaber was that big it looks like it got bigger too <laughs> so, <laughs> so um all right here's a question i have for you serious yeah. question so i know that most people are star wars fans i am a star wars fan i watched the movies when my dad took me to the theater when they were re-released in the 90s i grew i was born in 1982 you were born in the 70s so 73 73 so, there's a big difference between the two of us, right? Uh, a 11-year difference, I think. So, yeah. yeah. Math. Math. Math, is, math yes. is good. <laughs> math is good. So, <laughs> two plus two is, ah, we'll figure it out later. <laughs> so, anyway. So, anyway. Um, yeah. They're basically, basically, what my question is, is, Being that you grew up watching Star Wars and I am familiar with Star Wars, I'm a huge fan of it. You are an uber fan of Star Wars. Um, And there are people that are uber obsessed with Star Wars. They're like, Star Wars has reshaped who I am as a person and it makes me who I am. Why is that? Because I like the movies, but they didn't have an effect on me like most people did. Like most people have had an effect on them. So I really want to know what you think and why you think it's such a big part of people's lives. Well... To reiterate some of the stuff that I talked about on on my show, yeah, um, I didn't touch on. I, I only touched on it. Uh, it's the moral compass that it provided me with. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you grow up uh, being a fan of something, and, and re- realistically, look, I, I saw the movie when I was four, mm-hmm. right, right, in theaters, and then I saw it multiple times. So it's one of the only things I remember about being four years old. Okay, is seeing Star Wars. Yeah. Blew my mind. There was no other movie out there like it. No other science fiction piece of work that was like Star Wars. Then you grow up. Three years later, you see Empire Strikes Back. Mm -hmm. Right. So now I'm seven. Then three years later, you know, now I'm now I'm 10 years old. Right. I'm seeing the last piece that kind of just reinforces everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And, And you have the light side. You have the dark side. It's all part of this one singular force that that binds us all and connects us right Mm -hmm. um and by binding i don't mean any like s and m bullshit i mean it's just like it truly just like holds us together all right right. now it makes sense yes i I saw i saw the look on your face yeah i was thinking that Um, (laughs) (laughs) uh but but yeah no it's it's s and m i am your father (laughs) a whole new meaning to that (laughs) call me daddy (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> so <laughs> so so it was it it really is like it it informed who i am as a person mm-hmm. you know and 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 really played a big part in in who i am today and like i said it's not taking anything away from the job that my parents did they actually did their job as well yeah. right uh part of their job was introducing me to Star Wars and keeping me connected to it. <laughs> you know what right, I mean? Right, right, yeah. And, and it's it's and I said it on my show, it's the it, to me it's a modern day Bible. Because there are a lot of religious undertones to the original uh three episodes, right? The four, five and six. Um where in one, two and three they try to explain the shit away with uh midichlorians and, you know, 
it's this creature that creates the force and ties you to it and blah. It's just really fucking. I don't get it, man. Like so they're they're just. I don't know what I. I think Lucas is. I, I mean, George Lucas for giving us what he gave us in Star Wars. I, I honestly think he's a pretty terrible uh, writer. <laughs> be honest with well, you. Well, yeah. I mean, but Lucas George Lucas is famous because of what he did bring. But I mean, yeah, when you take it apart, he hasn't really done much more than Star Wars. Yeah, no, it, it, I mean? he is literally. I think Lucas is literally a case of uh, lightning and striking. Yeah, but I think George Lucas. I mean, he has done a ton of other stuff. I mean. He partly created ILM, which is oh, industrial yeah. light and magic, which is responsible for almost every type He's of special visionary. effects. Yeah. He's a visionary. I, so for that, I'm like, that's a big, big thing for me because I almost went to school for um, like computer graphics and, right. and special effects. And then I realized, no, I don't want to do that. I want to be an actor. Right. So, um, but yeah, so I understand what you're saying about Star Wars. Like, I totally get it. Like, it's it's one of those movies where, you know, you get sucked into it. You, um, you know, it becomes a part of your life. It it kind of gives you your moral compass when you talk about the light and the dark side. But at the same time, I have a hard time understanding why so many people are addicted to it. Like there are people that are uber fans, like like almost everyone we work with is like Star Wars nut. And I wonder if it's and these are people that are younger than me. So it's like. They can't say they grew up watching the movies. I mean, I guess they could if they watched them growing up, but they weren't growing up as they were coming out. You know what I mean? Right. So it's a different time for you to be like, oh, yeah, Star Wars, man, wicked obsessed. It's like, why? Because you were, you were, you were born later than I was. So there were the stuff that I've seen, like Jurassic Park, like all these movies, all these superhero movies have come out. You know, what I, mean? I mean, like they've seen all this stuff in Star Wars. Coming from a time when you saw Star Wars, there wasn't anything like it. Nothing had been done like that before. So I right. can see why that would have an impact. It's now where we have kids that are like, I feel like now it's like they're excited about Star Wars and are like uber fans because it's the thing to be a fan about. It's like, oh shit, it's a fad Star Wars. It's like, yeah, but you weren't a fan before they said this new movie was coming out. Right Now it's just like the thing. You know, and it's like, yeah. and no, I it's a lot like when yeah. it's and a lot like when the Patriots won the Super Bowl against the Rams. Yeah, all right. Well, let's get fans a, came out of the woodwork. Yeah, all right. So anyway, let's <laughs> get away from that shit. I get what you're saying, but we're talking about cinema, not about oh, yeah. NFL. I'm well, just saying it's a it's it's something I can you know relate to that way. Horrible know? reference, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you are exiled. So, so anyway, so I guess I guess. Yeah, that's my that's my question, you know, but whatever. Um people are going to be if you're going to like Star Wars, you're going to like it. I like it. I am not um uh I don't get hard for it, but I know that some people do. Some people are just like, "Shit, Star if you you can say Han Solo and the next step is you know, trying to find protection." Like, you know what I'm saying? Like Right. It's so whereas people say Han Solo and immediately I'm like Harrison Ford and Indiana Jones. That's where my mind goes. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I don't know. I'm I'm really I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with the movie. I think it's going to be an excellent movie. Speaking of Star Wars and speaking of stuff surrounding Star Wars, there was an article that you came upon today which I would like you to mention and it involves the director of The Hateful 8. So, talk about that, man, cuz I thought that was interesting. Yeah, you know, uh Quentin Tarantino actually was on the Howard Stern show, the serious show that he has. Um, and he had mentioned something about Disney, basically mm. blasted Disney, said that Disney was pushing his movie out of the theater. Um, I'm looking up the quote right now. Um, he basically says, and this is what he's, this is his quote. It, he says, it was real bad news and it fucking pissed me off. This is classic Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. Right? Um, they're going out of their way to fuck me. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what he says. Um, and and me, like I'm thinking, dude, they they saved your ass because if you are trying to put your movie in the theaters at the same time as Star Wars, you're going out of your way to fuck yourself. Yeah, <laughs> you know like, exactly. I don't understand why he thinks it would be a good idea to have his movie in the theater the same time as Star Wars. Like, does he think I'm going to be like, I'm going to see Star Wars and right after this, The Hateful Eight, like, or or you know, Star Wars, I'm probably going to go see The Hateful Eight instead. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, like Star Wars is a groundbreaking series. You know, right. like it's. I I honestly think Star Wars could possibly blow Avatar out of the water. You yeah, know what I mean? Cause it could. I mean, good dude, it's not because it's worldwide phenomenon. But I I just I just feel like yes, he's an idiot for thinking that his <laughs> movie with Kurt Russell in it and Samuel Jackson, like, look, they're great actors, they are, but it's not going to be better than Star Wars. It's not going to. It, people are not going to go see that at the same time of Star Wars. So I would thank Disney and, you know, just, dude, give it a uh, – push it back a couple weeks. Yeah. You know? A couple weeks. Push it back a couple months. Unless he's trying to get it into theaters before – Because I know a couple of weeks like, from now I'm going to be going to see Star Wars again. Well, yeah, but, I mean, do you, he might be actually freaking out because he wants to get it in theaters before uh, Oscar season. But then again, I know that the it's already technically been a. Uh, I think the Academy has already like said that it's basically. Re- I think if the release date gets pushed back, it's still considered that was the original release date, and critics have already seen it. That's what like while you see at the beginning of the movie, like Quentin Tarantino, like awesome, hateful eight, you know, like two thumbs up. So yeah. critics have already seen it, so therefore it's it's going to be considered for the Oscar season. I don't know if it's going to win anything. Has been nominated for anything that I know of, um, but yeah, I think he's stupid. Yeah, for, I, I, I for think it's about it. I think it's moronic. I think to to want to put like Alvin and the Chipmunks, dude. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Every time that I see that trailer, I don't know if it's coming out in theaters or if it's already on iTunes. Dude, if there was any time that you do not release Alvin and the Chipmunks, it's when Star Wars is being released. Yeah, but dude, that movie was gonna bomb anyway. You know what I mean? Like the people that are, you're, the kids that are want to see Alvin and the Chipmunks are not the same people that want to see Star Wars. No, like when you're deciding when to release Alvin and the Chipmunks, you know what you do? You look at you look at the calendar and you say what what is a date that nothing else is coming out. Yeah, but I think they kind of slid one by the studio. They were like, Alvin and the Chipmunks, <laughs> December 14th. They were like, do it. And they were like, ha ha, they didn't realize at the same time. <laughs> if we didn't get it in now, it was never going to be in theater. <laughs> so that's basically what happened. Who gives a fuck about that movie? Uh, Nobody gave a fuck about the first one. Anyway, um, something oh, that I did want to talk about. Oh, hold on, before, before you go on, because another piece of Star Wars related news okay. um, that I thought was fucking hilarious uh, give me one second. Oh, are you talking about the uh, the musical rendition of the theme? No, 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 no. Oh, all right, okay. Nope. Uh, that was funny. That was uh, Jimmy Fallon and the uh, Roots. Yes, and celebrities from Star Wars basically like doing a Brady in the like a Brady bunch kind of you know boxes their heads uh, humming the Star Wars theme. It's pretty cool. Check it out. So Melissa Harris, uh, she is a uh, CNN. Uh, personality. I don't know uh, what. Uh, no, not CNN. It's uh, MSNBC. Mm-hmm. She she uh, she is on. She basically came out recently because like they decided they were going to talk about Star Wars because that's all anybody can talk about right now, right? Right. Uh, she comes out and she says uh, Star Wars is racist. <laughs> yeah. Like she, so she's a black woman, <clears throat> and she's calling Star Wars out for being racist because Vader is a black guy, right? And she says, so this is this is her quote, and I, I love reading quotes, so, you know, you guys will learn that about Do me. It. Uh, she says, I know why I have feelings, good, bad, and otherwise, about Star Wars, she explained. Uh, she says, I spent the whole day talking about the Darth Vader situation, the part where he was totally a black guy whose name was basically James Earl Jones. And while he was black, he was terrible and bad, Awful and used to cut off white men's hands. Okay, he cut off like one dude's hand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and didn't actually claim his son. <laughs> right? But as soon as he claims his son, and that goes over and goes over to the good side, he takes off his mask and he's white. Yes, I have many feelings about that, she says. Okay. Uh and like the <laughs> there's a dude. I hate on, this uh, girl. I hate her. <laughs> On this site called Mediaite.com, he puts like this this list of things, like reasons why she's she's bullshit. Um, there was a bunch of uh, reasons, and one of them basically, like he was trying the whole movie, he's trying to claim his son. Like that's yeah. like not just like in Empire Strikes Back, he's like, "I'm your father, dude." <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Come rule the galaxy with me, <laughs> right? Not not like you know, I don't have no kid. <laughs> you know? <what> yeah. I mean? <laughs> 
like, I want a DNA test. <laughs> you, know what I mean? like, you 